Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Who Are You podcast. I'm your host, Connor Overbay. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, welcome. Always happy to have a new listener. Make sure you guys press that subscribe button, follow button on any of our social media. It's going to be at Who Are You Pod from everything from Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all the normal spots. Also, if, if you guys haven't checked out our YouTube channel, we've started it about six, seven weeks ago. It's crazy to think that we've been doing this for so long and finally just started our YouTube channel. So make sure you guys go subscribe. You guys can see all the awesome people that we have on the podcast. Also, if you guys know anybody who has a story that needs to be told, a business owner, entrepreneur, uh, restaurateur, really a mix of anybody, and you think they'd be a good fit for the podcast, make sure you reach out. Let them know they can reach out to me on social media or email me. It's going to be whoareyoupod at yahoo.com. But today, I'm sitting down with three very, very special guests. Been uh, been trying to get with you guys for a little while now, and I'm excited to actually finally be sitting down here. I'm sitting down with the owners of Collect Jack, so welcome, guys. If you guys want to go down the line, let everybody know uh, your name and also your social media handle so they can give you a follow, all that good stuff whoever wants to go first i'll go first uh my name's keegan uh my socials is key spark k-e-e-s-p-a-r-c yo what's good it's your boy sd instagram is at sd underscore the ghost what's good y'all appreciate y'all having us on uh who are you podcast it's your boy who carpet dm on ig remember the v I'm sorry. The A is a V. Carpe diem. Appreciate it. Hell yeah, guys. Well, like I said, welcome to the podcast where I'm sure you guys are noticing on the YouTube channel that we are not sitting on the normal set. We're actually sitting down in y'all's business today. So I'm really excited to sit down and get to know you guys a little bit more. You guys do amazing promotion. That's the main thing that's really drawn me to you guys. Like your promotion is awesome. Every time you guys post a video, I, I just think it's cool ideas, do a lot of good work. And also just all the different kinds of vintage stuff that you guys have here is awesome. And I'm a big Jags fan, so I love seeing all the Jags shirts and the mix of things here. So just to get started, we're kind of get to know y'all's background a little bit and we'll get more into the business from there. So the first thing I want to start off, start off with you, Keegan. Where are you originally from, my man? Born and raised here in Jacksonville. Hey. Uh, I was born on the day the Jaguars actually got inaugurated. Oh, really? So the newspaper that says, do you believe in miracles, December 1st, 1993, that's the day I was brought into this world. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. So most of my life here in Jacksonville, I've dabbled on the West Coast a little bit down in Orlando, but... Born and raised, native of Jacksonville, teal runs through my blood through and through, so... Yes, sir. I appreciate you. Yeah, man, no problem. You don't get to meet a lot of people who are originally from Jacksonville is the big thing. A lot of people are transplants or a mix of things. Like I was born originally born and raised here in Jacksonville as well. Haven't had a chance to move out quite yet, so I've <laughs> thought about it maybe in the future, but we'll see what goes on. What about you, SD? Where are you originally from, my man? Same as y'all boys, born and raised in Jacksonville proud of the home team man <laughs> i don't know if i move honestly i might get away for a little bit to explore but Jax is always home to me nothing wrong with that man I'm say it's it's not a bad place it's just for me kind of want to go test the waters and some other places not saying this is happening anytime soon for sure but you know 20 i'm 25 been here for a minute now go see if there's some other places out there that you know i can thrive in or kind of mess around in for sure. yeah, yeah. explore but Jax for me is just like coming up yearly so it's always developing. There's always new things in the city. Yes, sir. What about you, Hootie? Um, I was born in Tallahassee. I've been in Florida my whole life. I spent my early years, elementary, I, I lived here in Jacks. Then I moved to Miami where I went to middle school and high school, and I moved back pretty much for college. And I've been in Jacks ever since when I met Keegan, um, one of the earlier years that I moved back then. We've just been connected ever since. Hell yeah. And I say, you guys all seem like good friends and, you know, you guys work well together. I feel like each of you guys have your own separate talents that help make this business work and help it grow. 100%. Yeah. So, obviously, you guys had a different name originally, right? It was Archive, if I remember correctly? Yeah. So, uh, my original partner, Cam, and I, we opened the store July of 2022. Um, Archives was the original name. The first playoff run with Trevor when they... Uh, we're playing the Titans. <clears throat> we basically, we had these kind of like bootleg Dewey, um, wing guard. It was always the Jags tees. We had them in production. I mean, I've, I've told this story a lot, but <laughs> we've had, the, we had them in production. We were selling them, um, the week of the game fanatics, who's actually headquartered here, had some secret shoppers come through. Um, so it's kind of like a gift and a curse. We were obviously doing something right to be on the, the radar, but we did lose our name. Uh, our Instagram kept getting shut down. So we were going back and forth for two or three months trying to figure it out. And essentially, we just, you know, felt it was time to do a full rebrand. 
So this is where we're at now. Collect jacks. Nothing wrong with that. And you guys sure. caught you guys caught a cease and desist letter from that, right? Is that basically what happened? Yeah, we did. So they had our Instagram shut down. They had our Shopify web store shut down. Um, and luckily, we had some representatives that we actually could connect with and speak to with Instagram. I mean, there's layers to any big corporation like that, but we were lucky enough to at least be able to speak to someone in person and uh, tried everything we could to get it back. But uh, we felt, you know, it was time to kind of move on from it. But it wasn't a bad thing because it's all a learning experience. And a lot of the collect now, the brand kind of, I think, resonates more with what we're doing. So we've gotten nothing but positive feedback from it. So definitely, you know, back where we're supposed to be. Hey, man, I like it. And I, like you said, I feel like you are doing something right. If you catch the cease and desist letter, that means there's been enough, sure. enough noise, enough For people sure. have seen it that they want to come in and make sure they get their piece, of course. When it came to getting that letter and everything, was there, did they like sue you? Did you have to give me money back for that situation or was it more uh, just stop selling the clothing? Yeah, no, we didn't, we didn't, I mean, we lost our brand. <laughs> that Obviously like that's a big thing. thing yeah. yeah. Um, but other than that, no, we didn't get sued or anything like that. We didn't like try to play around with it or, you know, keep pushing it or try to see how far we could take it. We just, you know, took it for what it was and, and moved on to the next thing. Nice. How did you guys come up with the name Collect Jacks? Collect, that came from Cam, actually. Um, we flipped. That was kind of our thing because my name's Keegan, starts with a K. His name's Cam, starts with a K. So whenever we had the opportunity to, we would try to, you know, incorporate that into it. So, um but yeah, I mean, it just kind of fits the the backbone of everything we do. Like we're all collectors at heart. You know, obviously there's a business to run, but um, that's what got us into the business. And you know, it's a pretty active word within the community. So we just felt we felt it fit everything we were doing the best. Nice, nice. Now, like like I said, guys, you guys run an amazing Instagram, and even coming in the store here, it's awesome. I, I came here probably about a week or two ago after we agreed to do the interview, and it's it's just cool to see what you guys got going on. You guys are doing what you want to do. That's For the sure. main thing. You don't have a corporate person saying, hey, you have to put this up, or you have to make a sale on this, or anything like that. You guys are doing everything your own. Right. And, and I think I saw a video. You guys had a, a collector or someone come by with bins of vintage from what I saw, right? Was that about like a week or two ago or was that from a little while ago? Um, so we've been fortunate enough to be brought on to um, a lot of the local like news stations to kind of showcase like what we're doing as a business here in Jacksonville. And luckily, you know, a lot of the, the people that are tapped into like that form of media are usually you know, people, you know, older people that have been sitting on some of these Jacks pieces for a while. So mm -hmm. we get hit up pretty frequently from, you know, hey, I live in St. Augustine. I have a storage full of this stuff. I don't know what to do with it. You know, and we kind of go throughout buyouts and different things like that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we're buy, sell, trade. So bring us the goodies. That's <laughs> badass. That's yeah. badass. So, Hootie, mean you were talking a little bit. You played sports growing up, correct? For sure. Say, was it just basketball? Did you play football or anything else I as well? I football. Um, my senior year, I actually played basketball, football, and baseball. Oh, damn, man. So triple threat? Yeah. Nice, nice. What was your uh, position in football? Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Football, I played running back and linebacker. Um, basketball, I was a guard. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes, I played I played football for a while. Whenever I was in high school, though, I was 230, 240 pounds going into high school. I was about 6'3", going in my freshman year. And then, you know, I guess puberty hit a little hard or something, and I lost a bunch of weight. I went around from 240 down to like 170, 180, wow. and I played tight end at the time. So I was tired of getting cracked. Sure. <laughs> so I, sure. I switched over to basketball, and we were talking about AAU ball and a mix of things, man. Mm -hmm. uh, did sports play a big role in your life and still do to this day? Uh, 100%. Um, I think especially when I was younger growing up, just watching just all the, the players and how they would dress and how stylish they were. That played a part um, severely in my upcoming um, – Final man, fit hoop. These guys, man. <laughs> but, um, just, yeah, I think just sports and fashion was hand-in-hand hand for me. Every time we went on a basketball tournament or something out of town, I always wanted to go to the mall and just get the newest pair of shoes or something. I just needed something fresh to be on the court, so uh, that played a huge part. Sure. Yeah, I totally understand, man. I was I was really, really big into Jordans when I was in high school and playing ball and everything. Yeah. I had to have the newest Jordans that just dropped. My favorite pair, uh, still to this day, were the Jordan 5 Laney's, the white leather, Ooh. blue blue and yellow tongue. Mm -hmm. Good pair. Yeah, I, say, I, I still have them. They're ripped up to hell because I, play, I played <laughs> ball in them. I wish I didn't mess them up. But, no, I was 
I was a super big fan. Uh, the Concords as well. I was a big fan of the Concords. Sure. And staple. Staple in the uh, basketball community. Of course. It was kind of cool. Um, like I said, growing up in Miami, Jordans and stuff was cool, but we always wore like real basketball shoes. Mm-hmm. But whenever I would come back to Jacksonville for like a weekend or a holiday, we'd go to Christmas tournament or something. You see all the players rocking like the Jordans that just came out probably yep. that day or the day before. And I was like, wow, it's a whole different culture here in Jacksonville. So like, Jacksonville is a, a really good spot, man. People always ask me, like, why don't you move back to Miami and stuff? But Jacksonville has a ton to offer. And I think that's really what's keeping me here. No, I totally agree, man. Like, I know I started off the pop the same about thinking about moving and stuff, but the, the growth of Jacksonville has been yeah. amazing. I remember, like, I'm sure you do as well from being born here, man. I remember when Beach Bowl. Boulevard and Kernan and all that was just trees. Yeah, there's nothing. I uh, I actually lived. I grew up over kind of by the town center. Mm-hmm. Um, and when we bought our our spot, I mean, I was a little kid. I didn't buy it, but <laughs> I used to take my friend's go kart and we would ride through all of like what is the town center now. That's that badass. Was all just trees and just like just random stuff. So it's definitely cool to see it come along. It's got a little bit of work to do, but you know, time will tell. I hope, For sure. hope that comes around. Oh yeah. I say, I'm sure you remember, you remember Regency mall when that was yeah, the happening sure. spot. Yeah. And That's now, where we got all the Jordans. That was the <laughs> it, was. It, it was. It was. And now it's just, it's being sold to like 10 different people. It's, it's I think it's, it's turning into a church. I think, I think yeah, a church bought it last time I heard like a church, a school, uh, there's a skating rink in there. It's oh, really? I think there's one lone standing sneaker store in there, I believe. Regency for me as a kid was like where you would go to get your, you know, fit off. Like yeah, bro. You were looking for shoes, clothes. Mm-hmm. Even if you were just hanging out, like that was the spot to be. And now as an adult seeing it like abandoned and stuff, it's... Even, it like, uh, what we do now, like, if you think, like, the Iceman and Mr. Kicks and the images and, like, those stores like that that we got exposed to in those areas, I mean, that kind of laid the foundation, I feel like, for even someone like us to come in and do, you know, open up this type of store that's, you know, where you could go to get your freshest freshest fits, for sure. Mm-hmm. No, there was clean stuff, man. Like, I remember before the internet was big, man, like, the mall was the spot. You weren't uh, buying stuff online, doing all that. Uh, and it's cool to see still a standalone store, man. I, like, I feel like that adds something to it. Like, you get to meet the people who are running the store, like what you guys do. You get to meet, uh, make relationships, all that kind of stuff. Yes, and it's it's big because I feel like a lot of people nowadays are trying to stay at home. We don't really leave and go to places. And I'm like, I, I think you're kind of missing a part of it. You know what I yeah. mean? So when it came to choosing this location here, um, what used to be over here was one of my favorite restaurants. You guys remember Shack Maui? Did you guys yeah, ever? Yeah, I was friend, I was friends with the owner. Me and my For family sure, both were man. cool, dude. Late, Late night, night spot. bro. Late night. You need something to eat? Forget Waffle House. Always a go to with Waffle House. But like Shack Maui was the safe house. If you didn't want a you know, waffle and hash brown. You can come over here and get a double burger with chips on it. Yes, bro. Late night, they would have bands in there at mm-hmm. three, four in the no, morning. It was a spot for sure. They had like you can get chip, like you said, a burger with chips on yeah. it, empanadas, like a for mix, sure. a hot dog with chips on it. It was me and my me and my wife. We used to live right down the street from over there, and at, we worked restaurant jobs. So we yeah. get off at like one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the There's morning. To eat. Exactly, Munchies. and nowhere to go. Like I love me some Waffle House, but Shack Malley was the spot. I, sure, I would yeah. say that was a staple, and I'm so sad that they left. I think they moved down to. Miami, if I remember correctly. No disrespect to Waffle House because that is a Florida staple. Of course. It's a staple outside of Florida as well. But Mm -hmm. Shag Maui was like, bro, it's 3 a.m. Where can we get food? Shag Maui. And it's going to be a vibe, too. It was a vibe. It was live music. They'd have, you know, the little Tiki Hut vibe with the lights and... That was a spot. It was dark in there. They had like the neon sure. signs and everything, man. It was it was a vibe. And the funniest thing, the first thing you see when you walk in is on the wall. It's the dude and his wife painted on the wall, like yeah. swimming and everything. Yeah. It was it was a cool spot, man. I, I miss those guys being there, but you know, stuff changes. But uh, back to my original question: How did you guys end up choosing this spot right here, or did it just kind of pop up and it was an opportunity? Um. So when Cam and I were looking at opening the store, neither of us actually lived here at the time. Mm-hmm. I was living in Orlando. He was living in. Charlotte. Um, originally, we were looking in like the Springfield area, and it's kind of funny because uh, one of my best friends, Malk Jacks, he owns a print shop down in Springfield. It's on Main and Ninth now, but it was on Main and Sixth. And um, we reached out about a different store that was down there, and then they suggested his old spot. And I was like, yeah, there's there's no way. So um, we decided like Beach. Obviously, it's a staple here in Jacksonville. Beach Boulevard is 
outside of Phillips, probably, you know, one of the busiest roads here in Jack. So we felt like just the traffic coming to and from the beach, it kind of aligned with like our demographic mm-hmm. and kind of what we were going for. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, everything kind of like just fell in line perfectly. So uh, definitely love the location. And if you guys haven't been through yet, definitely come check us out. Oh, Thanks yeah. Too. They got everything here, man. I would say any kind of Jags gear or even other than just the Jaguars. You guys have a mix of everything. I love y'all's shoe wall over there, too. I, I walked in uh, just setting up this stuff. I saw some fives on there. I was like, oh, I was like, there it's they kind are. kind of weak like, right now. I'm not going to lie, but we'll, we'll get back. It takes, <laughs> sure, it, it takes sure. time, man. I would say the, the industry of, like, buy, sell, trade during COVID time blew up. It was it was mm-hmm. crazy to see. Like, you know, I would see these uh, famous YouTubers that do the buy, sell, trade. I'm trying to think of some names now. But uh, I would definitely say round two is probably mm. like everyone's. That was like the grandfather That's to all this. Go-to. Yeah, hell yeah. And I remember like StockX was getting bigger and yeah. bigger, and eBay even had their own like eBay verified, and people were selling shoes. Yeah. It's just for me, man. I, I got burned on a couple of times where I'd buy stuff and it said it was verified and then I would look up, you know, it's like what makes a Jordan real, like mm-hmm. this pattern or the way it's laced or the way it's, um, the, uh, it's sewed and everything. And I'd be like, yeah. damn, I'm like, these aren't real. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be sitting there. I'm like, I'm not rocking these yeah. <laughs> because at, uh, I went to Sandalwood high school here in Jack's okay. and there'd be some kids I would walk in dude and they had fake Jordans on and they would get just torn, yeah. torn yeah. apart. We dude. call those Chinamans back in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> sure. like, That's when you, you skip lunch. Cause you just scared to even, and be out there because you know you don't yeah, get rest. I wouldn't even go to school, bro. <laughs> I would just turn say, right around. <laughs> rocking face is a very like it takes away pride. Like it was never you, cool, man. If you can rock face, man, that just speaks character about you. Like for sure. If you rock face, that means just spend your you money. You would do some questionable acts, in mm-hmm. my opinion. Like, <laughs> yeah, man, just spend your money on what you can. Don't don't spend money on fake stuff. That just doesn't make sense. So it's, it's just not worth it, man. And like I said, I don't want to get roasted, man. I guess it's like, I say it's okay, like, if you bought it not knowing. Of course. Like, if you knowingly bought some fake Chinamans, like... Expect de- I'm not gonna cooked. lie though. The, you like, devious, the whole culture man. behind that now is completely changed. Like people yeah. are doing it left and right. We got to like, get into that. Like, no remorse. <laughs> the, the reps. Like, it's scary now because there's a lot of fake shoes that look like real these days. So mm-hmm. Got to be skeptical of those. Uh, I just say it's more of a pride thing. Like if you will willingly rock a pair of fake shoes. Okay, say it's a Grail. You've always wanted. It's a thousand dollars. Like okay, the reps might be your next best bet. But it's also just like, bro, you really want to walk around wearing fake Travis Scott? Nobody you know, will like, know. I don't know. It's Nobody will know. It's just questionable. It's like, yeah. It's, it, it also depends on the people who you're around. He's like, you guys, you guys know what to look for. And, you know, sure, I was, I've was, i been sure. aware of it now as well, kind of testing things out. But, you know, to like the layman, the person that doesn't isn't into Jordans or into any of the specific mm-hmm. shoes, they wouldn't know. So I feel like that's what yeah. people kind of play off for of sure. a lot. Right. Well, it's also back to getting cooked. Like if you are wearing a <laughs> pair of fake <laughs> shoes. <laughs> and you're in a public setting and someone's like yo bro those off whites are not real are not you bad. would turn into a tomato you know you blush you'd be like holy shit what what you mean like my bad Mm-mm. kids were ruthless back in high school oh, man sure. like when when that's man. school you'd get cooked oh Nowadays, yeah days it's like someone might not even tell you your stuff's fake like they might just laugh at you and you're looking like man what they looking at like Mm -hmm. in reality they're cooking you there's a there's a famous video i saw on twitter one day it was these kids they were it's like a pair like air force ones or uh air maxes or something and whenever he would stomp they'd light up and oh like the video of those these kids just going in on this poor kid i was like oh i was like i can feel that those are the pay less specials (laughs) <laughs> shop at collect man don't, don't oh yeah, buy reps. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i would say shop, shop at collect the get the real thing do not buy reps man. Nah, just rocking reps man it's just not a good look because even say you get tired of that shoe and you want to sell it you bring it to us to sell we, we're not buying that like and mm-hmm. we're gonna tell you it's fake and then you're you're gonna feel some type of way because you're like damn bro my shoe's fake what like <laughs> it happens people tried to like when we first opened a lot of people used to try to bring fake shoes in here trying to be slick I remember some fake travis's walked in some mochas sometimes it's slick sometimes it's they don't know like they genuinely True. might buy the shoe thinking it's real they're like oh i wore this twice i don't want to wear it anymore let me take it to collect mm. and then we have to tell you hey bro sorry this is fake it's it's not a good look you yeah. 
you feel devastated in the moment, like, damn, bro, my shoe's fake. I don't Especially wore... if you got tax on it. I was gonna say, oh, like, yeah, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't wear these on a date, bro. I don't <laughs> took Instagram pictures in these. Like, just keep them, bro. Yeah, <laughs> just keep them. Just take them to the gym, bro. <laughs> nah, I understand, man. So with with you guys, how did all three of you guys meet? Obviously, I, I remember you saying in, earlier in the pod that you guys kind of met early up, but how did that whole situation go down? Uh, uh, go ahead, I'll let SD go. I was gonna say these guys, they can speak. Before I came around, but for me to just butt in real quick, I yeah hold on. Yeah. <laughs> for me to just butt in real quick, I was a friend of the store, basically when it was the original Archives Boys, when it was these two along with Cam, who we previously mentioned, and it was a whole different business in my opinion. Like it was a different energy, different team. They had their own situation going on. I was just a friend of the store. So how you asked how we all met, it was just kind of like organic. New shop in Jacksonville, I got to check it out. Because for me, it was like the spot to go see what's going on. Like they're holding events, they're doing sales. You know, I'm sure you all have seen it, the $5 pile sales, $10 pile sales. Yep. People are lined up down the sidewalk, you know, 100 people deep waiting in line to come shop. So as a local born and raised in Jax with not many places to shop, it's like, bro, let me go see what these boys are doing. Got to. That's how I fell in with these two. Speaking for them, though, they can tell you this This started with Keegan and Cam, you know what I mean? And then mm-hmm. Hootie fell in to the mix. It was a natural, organic thing. For Hell sure. yeah. For so, sure. yeah. Yeah, when, um, so when, Cam, when it was just Cam and I in the beginning, I respect SD the most because he was the first person. Because we're buy, sell, trade, so people are always trying to bring us stuff and they run through the racks and try to see what we sell it for and trying to sell it to us at that price and it's like that obviously doesn't work he was the first one that really sat down and was like every deal we worked out was like yo you have 60 on this shirt that's how we do it we'll do 60 on the shirt just give me half and we would do that you know constantly and just build that relationship up um but recently um my boy had to step away for a little bit so well, I'm sure we'll get to that part of the conversation later, but uh, there was definitely just like a void that we needed to fill here, especially with the vintage, and we call him the flat leg god, you know what I'm saying? He has <laughs> the best aesthetic, I, I think, you know, as far as like just making the product just, you know, just give it that feel and that look to it, pause. But, Attention um, to detail. Yeah, yeah for, sure, for sure, for <laughs> sure. Um, so yeah, man, I mean, we he's joined Collect in March, and we'll have a more formal introduction um, coming here soon and on Instagram and social media and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's been a good, it's, you know, we've definitely enjoyed having him around so far. It's good. I like to hear it. This guy's just been goofy. I knew him for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, we I actually met Hoot cause uh, my best friend Jolly, uh, when he moved to Jack's, that was who they would like sell phone posits to each other. Oh, all really? The time. Yeah, yeah, my buddy sure. Jolly like man phone posits. I haven't thought about posits. those in yeah. so long, and bro. They wore the same size, so like you know, we just kind of connected that way. And then my college room, uh, college roommate, and one of my best friends is actually his cousin Frost. So nice. You know, we just all just connected and you know done yeah. our thing since For South sure. by Southwest was crazy. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. We always we would go on these random trips together, and we were just like you said, always around each other at the same time. Um, just had a ton of mutual friends, and as we got older, I don't know, we just got closer and started hanging out, and like you just became one of my best friends for sure. That's cool, man. That's it. And like you guys staying friends with a business as well. I've seen people who start a business and it tears them apart real quick. So yeah, it's, man, it's cool. It's, it's it's not easy, but. Um, I think like the relationship we had before we came into all this was you know, stronger than whatever work can bring into it. So we just personally, I just kind of like tend to that whenever like something gets hard or something, I'm just like, it's just work, man. Don't let it like get to you too much. And um, yeah, man, it's been working out ever since. Nice. Just, nice. I was say these boys were basically a family before the store. So then like when it organically showed itself, through the store, like you come in and you can tell they're friends, not just business partners. 
with cold chips on their shoulder towards each other. It's like, no, nah, we're going to go to the bar after this when the store closes. Like, we actually hang out outside of this. Public relations, man. I was going to yeah. say, <laughs> it's like, a, it's like a, a neutral, organic thing where it's not forced. Like, mm-hmm. you're not, like, pushing yourself onto someone. Pause. Mm. Yo. Big <laughs> pause. There's a lot of pauses in this one. Uh, <laughs> you're not pushing yourself and faking some shit. Like, you can actually hang out with some guys and feel like you're a part of something mm. without there even being a question of like yo are you down with collect like no nah, bro you can come in the store and hang out and literally chit chat with us for 20 minutes to however long you stay and you know mm-hmm. we're not gonna fake any energy towards you like we're gonna hang out we're gonna tell you what we've been doing today you'll see it day by day you might ask us bro why is this shirt this price will it give you an explanation a little history behind it mm-hmm. you might even ask us what's the next event y'all are doing we'll give you a little inside scoop like always relating to the customers on a friendship level rather than just like hey buy something and get out like nah mm-hmm. we want to actually like hey what are you up to today what brings you in mm-hmm. what you looking for what you getting into like yeah it's more so than just mm-hmm. business even though we are a business we try and make friends and family with whoever comes through the store hell yeah man hell yeah. i mean every whenever i came in here even like the first place i actually met you guys was at the 904 pop-up mm-hmm. and you guys were super cool man i was just walking around just like what you guys doing man the social social networking man just going around handing yeah. out stickers and everything and you guys are very welcoming man like i said like seeing what you guys do online some people may feel intimidated by that because you guys are a big brand like a lot of people know i was telling people i was having you guys on they're like what <laughs> i was like i was like hell yeah i, was like, I got the boys coming That's on good to hear for sure yeah man you guys have a great reputation around jacksonville and i've seen you guys on other podcasts like um i saw you were on forecast with a big c right mm-hmm. say shout out to big c i'm buddies with him hundred man what's up big c yeah <laughs> i was say i love big c man and what's he's up? he's what's taking up show, he's what's taking up a little break for the from the pod but he's been getting his mind right and getting back Back into yeah, it man, so. got to got to yeah and then i saw you guys were on og sessions as well or was it just you keegan who was uh, on there? so we were on there twice well cam went on the first time and then i joined uh the second episode of it but um i mean i definitely you know commend everything you guys are doing it's definitely running a podcast is not an easy thing you know on the surface people think it's like fun and and cool and everything like that but they don't understand the amount of work that goes into it i edit all of our um, like YouTube videos and stuff like that for the store. So to sit down and have to do this on a week to week basis and kind of put the results behind you and just know that, you know, there's a long grow growth stage, um, pause with, <laughs> with running a, running a podcast. So it's definitely all respects to you guys. No, nah, man, I appreciate it. And the thing is, like I was telling you, I had no audio editing skills or, you know, learned how to, I taught myself everything with this. And at the end of the day, man, this is a way of me getting to know more of my city, 100%. you know, yep. say so I was born and raised here and, you know, you are around your friends and, you know, people you work with and that's really kind of your circle right there and just getting out there and starting to talk to more people and really promote that are people that are doing good stuff here in Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. Like you guys promote Jacksonville as like, as the bright side, not just the, like a lot of people have this weird idea of Jacksonville is dangerous or whatever it is. Yep. Just like any, just like any city, there's 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 parts. I was not to cut you off. Go ahead. I have to jump on that topic. Pause. Um, <laughs> sorry, these boys. A lot of people. These boys pause everything. A lot of people good. like <laughs> have a negative perspective of Jacksonville. I don't know if it's just like a stigma. If you are born here and raised here, and you're just burnt out on it, you think there's a certain energy about it. I always hear negative things about Jack. So someone being born and raised here and seeing it develop day by day like it's off topic but every highway in jacksonville has been under construction my whole life Mm -hmm. i'm born and raised here i've never seen one of these highways fully (laughs) like good to go they're always under construction there's always a new building being under construction like there's so many things coming up but people always have this stigma where they want to hate on jacks and i used to feel the same way as a kid i'm like man screw jacks like this place sucks for sure growing older you get to this point you're like nah man this is the home team like we got to represent this place Mm -hmm. if we don't stand up for jacks who who will will? so like in my mind being from jacksonville i'm always rep it i spoke earlier saying i might not move away i want to explore for sure i love going on vacations i love seeing different parts of the world but for me like home is jacksonville even if i didn't have family or friends here there's like an attachment here where you know, people, everyone around me might be burnt out by it, but in my mind, it's like, 
growing daily. Like Mm -hmm. we have the opportunity to be a big major city. We're the largest city landscape wise in the U S I don't know, you know, for certain, like how big that is compared to other cities, but like we're the largest landscape. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of opportunity for us to build up, to be a Miami, uh, Las Vegas and New York city pause, like not New York city is its own Lane. thing like, yeah it's huge in its own self but for sure we have opportunity to be something bigger than just what people put us as now i totally agree with you man Jax is growing dude it's what I'm saying. It, it really is getting big and as i've said like the negative connotation man it's what people put on the news you know there's for sure. you know there's always some kind of negativity put out there but if you really take a second to stop and look around and see what's going on Jax, sure. including you guys and other businesses that are coming up nonprofits here man i've sat down with multiple nonprofits, like um, one is dreams come true foundation they're the ones who did, they're basically like make a wish but the jacksonville version okay and they've helped out operation new uniform they help uh veterans get uh basically whenever they get out of the military basically get them back into normal person mode For where sure. they're not worried about you know what's going on overseas or getting into fights or anything yeah. and basically help them get back their skills to add that into a workplace right. so go be in management go be a leader and not have to stay in the military uh, mode mm-hmm. but there's just there's just a mix of stuff going on here man and as i've stopped and taken a look around a bit it's really impressed me to be honest yeah, with sure. you mm-hmm. i've gotten to meet a lot of great people including you guys and just a mix of people here who are all just trying to do good things and represent jacksonville as a better light yeah that's the only thing is man represent the city and i would even say like speaking on day by day come ups in the city like there's more events almost every weekend every week it feels like you know there's always something going on in jacksonville to where you almost can't even catch a break. We like can't there, keep up, man. That you can't keep up. Like, there's one event on a Tuesday, and then you turn around, and there's an event on Thursday. Yep. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, oh, wait, you wake up Monday, there's a whole nother. It's, it's like, regularly upcoming with numerous different things. There's mm-hmm. no lane you can box, like, everything going on in Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. There's something for everybody, whether yep. you – like what we have going on here you like music you like food you like entertainment there's always something it is and the cool thing i feel like about our generation we're the next ones up we're the ones pushing the ball forward and really kind of getting to the early stages and we never know what will happen in 20 years like you guys are going to continue to grow i already know that and shout out to safe house as well by the way safe house safe house jacks they're doing things where they're collaborating with all kinds of people as well say joe amp everybody from random acts of podcast love them and that's my biggest thing with doing this is collaborating with everybody you know there isn't just one one kind of person or one kind of group that I'm trying to work with. I'm just trying to get with anybody who wants to sit down and have a conversation with me and just be a part of the community. And Jackson's good for that, man. There's people here from everywhere. There's people say. like them who are like born and raised here, even us like raised here. But every time I turn around, there's someone moving here from Georgia or somewhere else. Like Jackson's I a saw, major I mean, city. I don't know how like accredited it was, but <clears throat> there was a census that came out last week. And last year, Jax was the second highest move st- to city mm-hmm. in the country like last Charlotte year. Charlotte or something? People uh, passed all that. Passed, uh, we beat Austin, Tampa? Texas yeah, out, say, everything. Austin. Probably Tampa. People uh, forget that Jax is an import city. So mm-hmm. like they're, not only are there's their military bases here. Two of them. There is, like I said, the import aspect of it where there's job opportunity. People moving from literally other countries to Jacksonville for a job, military, whatever it may be. There's a lot of draw to Jacks because, again, we're the largest landscape city in the U.S. So, like, it's not, bro, you have to drive 30 minutes whichever way you go to Jacksonville. North side, south side, east side, west side, downtown, beaches, like, none of that stuff is... Oh, 10 minutes down the road. Nope. You're making a trip. That's my job, man. I, I drive around all day long, man. They'll add something to my schedule and, and like, I'll look at it and I'm like, oh, that doesn't look too far away. Put it on the map 45 minutes away. I'm like, yeah. fuck. <laughs> like, you're I, catching traffic. 100%. Oh. Yeah, but it's not too bad, man. Like you go up to like, like you were saying, New York and all those other spots, man. It could be a lot worse. Mm-hmm. But let's uh, say Jacksonville, that's the nice thing about it. It's so spread out where there may be some traffic, but it's nowhere near like you're not sitting on the on the highway for four hours for like, sure. like you're in like California or even say, Miami, man. I've been through Miami bad, a couple man. times. There's a few times you had to just stay in the house, man. Don't <laughs> but don't I, even do it. yeah, no, you good, man. I got a question for all three of you guys. So obviously you guys are all busy. I know you guys are, you know, putting a lot of your time here into the business or even outside, whether it's through like doing the 904 pop-ups and everything. What do you guys do for like your relaxation time or something that you're is an interest outside of this? 
chill with my girlfriend, man. That's real. How long you been with your girl? Uh, like four years. Hey, uh, congrats, man. Our like biggest, like me, Key, and all of us, like we're trying to get him on it, but <laughs> we're big on the reset. Um, so like we'll get you know Sunday, Monday usually our off day. Hopefully we're not busy on a Sunday, but Monday like we just I can like take anything as a vacation. We'll just drive to St. Augustine for the day, and I can like count that as a vacation for me. But like really relaxing, like I definitely love going like out to Swanee and oh yeah, Swanee's you know, nice. cabin and just being in the woods, just hanging out. Like that's probably the best like quick getaway for me for sure. I like that man. I'm not going to lie, for me, I struggle with turning the work off. Like, it's hard for me to clock out. Like, I'll leave here, go home, and my brain's still mentally clocked in. Like, it's Mm -hmm. hard for me to really tell myself, like, all right, don't do anything today at all. Go hang out at the beach and leave your phone turned off. Like, don't look at it. Don't think about clothes. Don't think about business. Like, just clock out for the day Mm -hmm. i genuinely struggle with that because every day i wake up i'm like (laughs) on that grind where i want to do something like it's hard for me to just say oh no i'm gonna go sit at the beach all day it's the same for me man i might be at the beach on my phone just like late in the sun just working off the phone doing something because it's hard for me to say like no i'm gonna take the day off like i (laughs) Even as hard as I work, I never feel like I've earned a day off because I always feel like there's something more that needs to be done. I'll be trying to lose my phone, man. Just, Sam. He, just for one day, man. He tells me, Lolo, like, take a day off. Take a day to yourself. Go reset for the day. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget. Uh, we were all in Orlando coming back from a, <laughs> a big, like, vintage <laughs> festival in Tampa. This was probably like we went on a market run. It was so, two days straight. Too. Um, so, like, in March, we, we called it, like, the the – collect market run i think or something like that and uh every weekend we were in a different city doing like a different market so we started with 904 pop-up uh vending and then they went up to thrift con in atlanta where they were buying and sourcing um the week after that they were in miami we were vending and then tampa was like the last stop of it all and uh (laughs) my mom lives in orlando so like on our way back up from tampa we were chilling and um, Monday, after everything, we were just, like, trying to sit around the pool, like, not do anything. It was and the day of the eclipse. SD was too. walking. Oh, really? It was S- the day of the eclipse, <laughs> Yeah. Too. Oh, yeah, yeah, we yeah. We were trying to, like, watch the eclipse. Staring at the sun. The day like, of the eclipse. <laughs> he's like, day bro, off, what are we doing? Hanging out. <laughs> SD's just, like, pacing back and forth, like, man, we bro. got all these new clothes. I'm trying to get these lays out. I'm, I'm trying losing to get my these mind. Picks. I'm literally, <laughs> like, losing my mind because I'm like, bro, we got to do something. These boys are like, yo, let's go lay by the pool. Yeah. I'm I'm like, fuck the pool. <laughs> Man, just like Key telling the story about all the places we went every weekend just made me tired. I want to go sit by the pool right now just listening to that, man. But that market run was cool, man. That was um like SD's first true month, I feel like. And me and him were really on the road together every weekend. Key held down the store, I think, just until we went to Tampa. And it was cool, man, because he, like you said, man, he worked so hard, man. He We couldn't kick him out of it out of this place but it was super refreshing because uh, his first few weeks we were in here early staying till eight ten like almost 10 o'clock we were missing restaurants closing um but yeah man it was cool and we learned so much about him and i was like just trying to tell him like bro we work a lot but you're gonna need to like figure out a day to like just take to yourself man oh, like yeah. you really need right now it doesn't feel like it but like you'll look down a month or two and like man you feel like you live here at the store so He's been learning a lot, man. It's cool. It's they, a lot, man. They definitely like pause, pushed it on me <laughs> to take days off because like I'd refuse to. Like and I would be in doesn't. here. He still doesn't. No, for real. Like, I was in here the first month I was here, thirty days straight, no days off, open and close. Even like before open, after close, just putting in the work because in my mind it was all refreshing and new to me. I was just like, bro, I, I want to do as much as I can. But they're over here like, bro, we've been doing this for two years now. Like, you want to take these days off because you're going to get burnt out. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, after that first month, I had, like, a couple days where I was burnt out. Mm -hmm. I was like, dude. Fuck this place. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I wasn't really feeling that way, but I was like, bro, I've been here every day. Like, 
You're just I'm tired, tired man, yeah, for sure. Now I feel you on that, man. It's it's hard, yeah. dude. Running a business and everything like I consider what I do a business, and like we're got we're getting our LLC, doing all that stuff, and turning it more into the business side of things. But as I was telling you guys, man, like I do, two, I limit myself to two a week now because there was weeks there where I didn't know where I was gonna get if I was ever gonna get this guest again. So I was like, all right, I'll say yes to everybody, and then I would do four in a week, and I do that two three weeks in a row, and just by the end, dude, I'm sitting there, I'm just like. I don't even know all that footage to edit, man. That like, well, also in the end, like I feel like people respect that more though when you kind of like create those boundaries. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I definitely respect you. Def like saying no sometimes. You know, it's it's tough, especially as a new business because you don't want to lose out on any opportunity or anything like that. But people definitely respect when you know you draw that line and set some boundaries. Oh yeah, man. Like whenever I reached out to you guys, I was like, this is when I have an opening. Mm-hmm. I'm like, if we can do that, that's great. And like some people be like, what, you got to push me a month out. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, at the end of the day, I have commitments. Like whenever I say, Hey, I'm going to be there. Mm-hmm. That's my word to you guys yeah. that I will be there. You Sometimes know, it has to be a month out. Yeah, man. And at the end of the day, I'm just very lucky where people are willing to sit down and come and talk with me, man. But as you were saying, like the editing, that's all new to me. Yeah, man. Just <laughs> even two a week seems like, not a lot, but I think that's a pretty fair number for yourself. Um, like us in the content, like we try to push out like two to three reels a week. And even that, like it's like a one minute max video, but even that can still be challenging. So for you to like have two, you know, people to have a podcast with every week, that's that's tough. That's a lot of research you got to do. That's mm-hmm. driving and editing and just trying to figure out your questions that you're going to come up with. So I think like. Even to a week, man, is good. So uh. yeah, man, we're we're very lucky. Uh, I've posted a new episode every single Monday. I only put one out a week. Uh, we've done that for going on three years now. The only one, <clears throat> the only week I missed one was when me and my wife got married. <laughs> so sure. so I, I feel like I got the pass on that one. But I'm just very. I'm all in or I'm all out kind of person. Yeah, so if I say I'm going to do something, I put it out. You know, I've always been big on that. And at first we started with audio and then we added the video from the phone and now we got the camera and just, mm-hmm. just kind of leveling up and learning stuff. And even talking to you guys or like past guys, like I was talking about a RAO podcast mm-hmm. and from them. And he, I had just started working on premier pro. He sent me a whole YouTube like college of it and like really helped me out, helped me learn how to, you know, set up a, a start screen or even like make cuts or add these little things. Because I, at first I was sitting there, man, I'm like, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing with this, but it's just, it's all about the growth, man. And I feel like if you keep grinding, stay consistent, that's how success happens. No, 100%, man. You just got to stay at it. Consistency yeah. is key. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. So with everything you guys got going on obviously i have seen some work with the jaguars as well in the past um i saw uh, i think it was with cam as well i saw you brought like a whole uh, what would you call them where you hang up the shirts and everything like garment rack, you yeah. brought it to the jaguars man i saw yes. guys trying on jackets uh, and everything so, shout out to Devin, by the way he's uh been by our side through pretty much everything all the rebranding when we started with archives and anytime he has a chance to you know kind of fit us into what they got going on he definitely involves us so Shout out to Devin Carvajal, but um, big shout out, my boy. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, last last year they were doing they had a concept for like the rookie photo shoot when they were rolling out um, all the rookies that just got drafted, and it was kind of a flip on like a double XL freshman cover. Oh, really? That's was, cool. Like tied right into you know kind of what we do in a way. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, we kind of helped just curate some outfits and brought a garment rack down there. Had the players kind of picking through stuff of what they want to wear for the shoot. Um, Tank Bigsby, like he wasn't the only one, but he was definitely one of the most excited players. Uh, he was trying to buy the whole rack like before. Oh, really? And he was the first like. So they they brought the they brought like one player in at a time essentially to do the shoot, and he was the first one to to get the photograph, and he was trying to buy the whole rack like before before everyone else came in. So that was kind of funny, but uh, but yeah, man, uh, you know any any. Any opportunity we have to work with the Jags, it's obviously the backbone to our business and mm-hmm. the Jaguar stuff. So to get that recognition and kind of get that like stamp of approval is definitely nice, you know, when it fits. Now that's big, man. I say it's it's crazy to meet these people, man, because you see them on TV and they look like superstars. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Especially like in Jacksonville, they're like, you know, 
to celebrities in a way. Oh, 100 percent, dude. <laughs> yeah. any, any, anytime I've gotten to meet a, a Jags player, man, I'm always hyped, dude. I've, yeah. uh, Paul Pesleszny was actually one of uh, my my dad's neighbors. Oh, I would nice, see I would nice. see his big ass walking down the street <laughs> with the small the there, smallest bro. dog I've ever seen in my life, and he would take up the whole sidewalk walking this dog. Oh, he did. And funny enough, um, whenever my first job ever was uh, selling Christmas trees, so oh, cool. like you know, like I was like 14, 13, 14 years old. So I would like they would pick a tree out, and I would go set it up for him and everything. Um, he came by my stand every single year, Paul Buzz Lesney would, and I would throw this little three foot tree in there and he'd give me like $150 tip. Just like, like, here you go, man. I'm like, I'm like, appreciate you, dude. Yeah, bro. I was always hyped seeing him and super nice. Always very well spoken. Uh, I've also gotten to meet a good mix of guys. Really. I actually got to play, um, Madden on the Jumbotron at the Jack stadium. Oh, that's dope. I remember that. Yeah. I say my, my dad, uh, my dad worked for Microsoft yeah. for a while. And you got me on that one. I saw that. <laughs> Say neck myself. My bad, you had to, <laughs> my bad you had to catch it straight, man. Yeah, you're good, man. Um, but got to do that. They uh, say he even went to the Super Bowl where the I think it was the Rams playing the Patriots, if I remember correctly, back when uh, Todd Gurley was still playing for the Rams, and okay. uh, and uh, he, he met Gronk. He got to meet uh, Todd Gurley. They basically got paid one hundred and ten thousand dollars to play a game of Madden. At this event, really, that's crazy. I was sitting there. I was like, "It's that. Qu- it's that easy." I was like, "Is that all I need?" Yeah, I'm just getting that name behind them. That that crazy. I got two lined up today. No, I just I love sports, man. And like speaking of the Jaguars, um, do you guys? I'm guessing you guys go to games pretty frequently, right? For sure, man. Mm-hmm, yeah, you can catch us in the Gallagher Club every game. I love every the Gall- I love the Gallagher <laughs> Club, man. I say my just there. My favorite game I've ever been to was the one against the uh, the Chargers, where we were down 21-0 halftime. Yeah, and that comeback, man. Me and my wife are sitting there. There was a kid sitting in front of me, like a guy our age, mm-hmm. and he was wearing a Chargers jersey, and he was talking shit. He's like, that's one interception, that's two interceptions, that's three. And I was like, all right, cool. And then once they scored that last touchdown, you can rip that open, man, go right ahead. Um, right before the the halftime, they scored that touchdown. I, I think it was Zay Jones I caught or something yeah. right before halftime. And I was like, all right, we got a chance. And every time Trevor threw a touchdown, I was in that kid's ear. I was, like, I was like, that's one, that's two. Yeah, and I was like, yeah man, it was, it was so good. Me and him were dapped up at the end. It wasn't like any hate on it at all. Yeah. But that's, that's still one of my favorite Jags moments. Do you guys have a favorite Jaguars moment? I was going to say, uh, just bouncing off that moment, man, you would have thought the city won the Super Bowl that night For because, sure. the, like, that's just just a tease of what would happen if the Jags were playoff potential Super Bowl contenders because that night like like I said the energy was insane the stadium could have been on fire they shut the Chargers down then the next day shout out Devin from the Jags he drops the Chargers advertisement logo yeah. broken Charger yes. like those the energy mixed with like that next day bounce back on the Jaguars official Instagram, you couldn't tell anyone in Jacksonville anything. No, like, for at least we, a week. I was gonna say like who who the Chargers like forget mm-hmm. we don't want to hear that. You yeah, know what I mean? Sure. But your question was favorite moments. That's got to be one of mine in recent time because I was also at that game and like you said, the Chargers were talking shit to us. Like you, a bunch as a Jags of shit. fan, you weren't safe. Like it was mm-hmm. almost like, damn, bro, this so is was embarrassing. That yeah, was that, that one? And then you turn around and we're leaving the game, talking the shit right back. Like mm-hmm. yes, Duval, you know what I mean? Like How representing. Many people did y'all see leave? What do you mean leave? Like, like the because I wasn't here for that game. That is funny. That game was probably my best Jag um, like experience too, but. I, I had a friend that was at the game, and he was he left, and he said a whole bunch of people were leaving after like he threw all those interceptions. Oh, a bunch of people! Like I saw, yeah. I saw people leaving the stands quick after the For third sure. interception. I was like, oh, I was like, this is rough. Yeah, yeah. But we stuck it out. Uh, we got lucky. My my wife's uh, boss is a uh, is a lawyer. Lives right across the water from the stadium, so we okay. took a boat over there. Okay. So oh, we really didn't have a chance to leave. They were like, they're leaving when we leave with them, kind For of sure. thing. For sure. Pulled and up his style. Hey, it was nice. I'm not. I'm not cool. gonna. Uh, on the boat? It was the, cold as oh shit that goodness. night. I drank enough to the point like where I didn't feel it. Ride, but still, like you're there in t-shirts and a short. Like <laughs> you're better than me, dude. I was bundled up, man. Up, man. I was. I had gloves on. It was so freaking cold that night. But just walking around, I have a video on my phone of us like walking down the zigzag of uh, the stadium to go down, and leave, and everything. People are yelling Duval. I got hugged by like ten people. It was yeah. like the weirdest experience no, ever. Sports but it was bring people together. Was, you know that. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Growing up, but when the team wins. Man, you'll hug a stranger you've never Bro, met in your a life. Big win like that. Didn't you say you had French kissed a fat lady that <laughs> nah, nah. Oh, that wasn't that game, my bad. I do have That's photos. That's when we lost to the Bengals. Literally like 
dressed down in Jags gear at a Jags game with a completely someone's uncle in like a thong spray painted and like full teal and gold like you know what I mean like, oh yeah they're dressed down this is someone's like grandpa out here generational Jags fan in and a I'm, speedo that's what I'm saying and I'm out here in my full like vintage gear and everything like it's two different generations of oh, Jags yeah. fans and it brings them together like yeah. we won it's like was that the same night that RG3 jumped in the pool I'm pretty sure he was in a full I'm suit. Like sure. he was doing the uh, like the uh, the halftime stuff and everything. I didn't even see that? That's yeah, no, he he, he, he full blown jumped. jumped full suit. It was it you was know, nuts. Crazy is the same night of that game. People were in that pool while it was freezing cold. They're wild. We're out there it's in puffer jackets. Man. I was gonna say people were in that pool on those cold games. Might have been heated. I don't know. I never. That's actually a good possible. point. That's a really that good point. Possible. What do you guys think about the the whole deal of the stadium getting rebuilt now? They apparently it's agreed upon and all this stuff's going down with it. It's gonna be it's I gonna think be weird. It's cool. Um, it definitely is gonna bring a big draw to like to downtown, which I think we anyone that's been around Jacks long enough knows that downtown definitely needs a little you know refresh spruce in up. a way. Spruce up. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, but yeah, I think like obviously their plans with like the hotels and the entertainment districts and my thing is like um I love music like, you know, and it kind of sucks living in Jacksonville. No artists ever stop through Jacksonville. It's kind of changing now like Justin Timberlake's coming here in November mm-hmm. and Luke Combs was just here a couple weeks ago. Bro said Justin um, Timberlake. Yeah, man. I love Jade. Yeah. Hey, no, but to his point, there are numerous artists coming to Jacksonville routinely. Like Future has been here recently. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He came with his tour, Don Tolliver, and all them. Like, there's regular events going on in Jacks. Like I mentioned earlier, it's almost weekly. Where, mm-hmm. Like you can't keep up. You're like, damn. There's this concert, and then three days later is another concert. But yeah, man. bouncing off his point, like downtown is coming up. It's getting revamped. New stadium, you know what I mean? New energy. Jags are coming up. Hopefully we go all the way sooner than later. Soon, you know yeah. what I mean? It's been better than it has been in the 20 years. Exactly. Of recent time. Yeah. We got really close recently. We've been feeding off that since then. You know, last season we were going crazy, 8-2, 8-3, whichever record it was, and then we turn around and – did some jack stuff. I was going to say, did some jack shit. <laughs> yeah. Fell out, got kicked out, wasn't good. But it's still, like, we've been riding off of the new energy in the city to the point, like, there's a new stadium, what he's saying, just new energy to the downtown area. Mm-hmm. It, it will draw people in. Even if you weren't a Jags fan, Jags fan before with this new stadium, team going as crazy as it is at each year like this might draw in a lot of new fans new people to the city like we were talking about earlier Mm -hmm. numerous people are moving from all over yearly almost it seems like whether it's for work or whatever, like Jacksonville's becoming a hot spot. It is, man. Oh, yeah. The only thing I don't like about the ja- the new Jag Stadium situation is the Jags aren't gonna be playing here for two years. Yeah, that was, that's, that's what I was gonna say. That's yeah. that's a big thing, and man. It's like two years of Trevor's prime. So when it's you like, first, it's asked, I think they're going to yeah. UF, right? They're going to Gainesville. Uh, that was think, one thing I heard. I think yeah, it's still, they're still deciding on either Gainesville or um, Daytona. Orlando, because they have that big stadium downtown. Yeah, the only but thing that, that would, sucks, that man. That would be terrible, because I don't know if anyone's ever been to that stadium, but it's, you think, you know, Everbank's bad. Like, that place gets Parking hot. Parking-wise, or what? No, oh, hot. It's hot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You get cooked out there. Well, yeah, Orlando, is there's no water anywhere. When yeah. you first asked, so, was on the water. like, what are our thoughts, I immediately thought negatively, because I'm like, damn, yeah, the Jags aren't going to be here for two years. If you want to go see a game, you're going to have to drive out of town, whatever, but, like, Keegan made it optimistic because it is drawing, like, new energy to the city. Yeah. So I feel like when the product is finished, it will benefit the city. But for those, like, two years they're under construction. It's going to be mad. It's I feel like the fans will be in a certain position where it's like, we love the Jags, but I'm not driving to Orlando every home game. That's how I am, man. It's just like, it's a Sunday. And like I said, I would probably go out to a couple games, but it's just with it being two hours, something hours away, man, on a Sunday – I gotta get up at work the next day at five six o'clock in the morning yeah, and all for that. Sure. And plus, it I just like depends. Yeah, like if you're if you can make one, awesome. But like for it, you know, when there's back to back home games and they're out of town, you gotta calculate that travel. And like you said, it's Sunday. Most people work Monday morning. Mm-hmm. Guys like us, like it's like yeah, let's go. Whatever, we're closed <laughs> on Monday anyway. <laughs> for sure, we. But are. the average civilian, you know, they gotta make their 
job in the morning, so they might not be able to travel to the you know which, wherever they're playing at. I don't even know if it's confirmed yet. It's not. I think I think like you were saying, either UF. I heard about Orlando. Yeah. It's still up in the air. They're they're still trying to figure out how they're going to pay for it's it. Not like even 50, for like 50. another three years, right? Well, there is like uh, there's one scenario they mentioned where. They would reduce the capacity of the stadium for one year mm. to like forty two thousand or something like that. So that way they wouldn't have to leave for a whole year. Work so, on pieces, yeah, kind of thing. So I, hopefully it's only going to be one year max, where they'll have to be away. It just sucks, obviously, with the timing of everything. Mm-hmm. They're finally, you know, and I think like the straight up losing seasons are behind us. Um, I don't know if they're like Super Bowl contenders just just yet, but we'll see. They're they're on track, man, mm. and. Uh, to have that kind of pull taken away from the city for that time period is going to be, yeah, man, that's negative. that's the one thing. It's just the the whole part. Like I'm cool with the new stadium. That's fine. Mm-hmm. It's just the whole side of them not being here for yeah. a minute. But I got two final questions for you guys. Yeah. And like I said, all of you guys, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, bro, I appreciate I've, you for being here, man. Yeah, this man. This a refreshing podcast. We're boys. just hanging out, man. Yeah, this man. Like a normal this is probably the easiest part I've been on, bro. I'm not gonna I was going to say, this is like shop talk. Like, yeah, man. Yeah. Where to come through the shop, this is like a conversation we'd have normally. Oh, I'll definitely be coming back through, guys. Like I said, I'm going to come and support and definitely come buy some pieces off you guys, yeah, man. I say, here. Yeah, always trying to like reach out and just work with people here in Jax, man. I'm all about promoting and just getting around and doing everything we can do to help support each other here oh, yeah but so my final question or final two questions for you what is a piece maybe that you have in the store or a shoe that you feel like is slept on and more people should get on it that's, that's a, a great toughie. question i know you guys all probably have different is, opinions so that's that why a, i asked that question that is a great question i'm not gonna lie i mean i don't know y'all want to y'all want to go, oh, ahead. That's go ahead, ahead, man. Oh, me, if you guys need time to think I, that's no that problem came straight to my mind is like all right i'll start with shoes and me as a mostly clothing connoisseur it's different for me to speak on shoes because i'm i'm the type of guy like the shoes i'm wearing i've had these for years Mm -hmm. like i'll wear the same shoes thousands of times same fall apart like it's tricky for me but to go back on topic i feel like shoes that are slept on are the shoes that not everyone is attracted to hype wise like everyone loves jordans i mentioned earlier travis scott Everyone knows who Travis Scott is, even if they don't listen to his music. They mm-hmm. know his sneakers and whatnot. Same with, like, off-white sneakers, Jordan brand. Like, there's all these different brands that everyone knows of without even a question, even if it's something your mom and dad put you onto or whatever. Mm-hmm. I feel like the sleepers are the shoes that the people don't know the same as they would in a Jordan or mm-hmm. a Nike, like a pair of New Balances a mm-hmm. pair of Asics, mm-hmm. a pair of, like, cozy dad shoes that might, like, literally you might see your dad wearing these or, like, as some, you know, like, school teacher or something like that, but it's because of the comfort factor. Like, they're wearing those for a reason because they're standing on their feet all day. Like, mm-hmm. it's cozy to their foot, cozy to what they do. I feel like that type of stuff is slept on because most people go for looks rather than comfort. And for someone who loves comfort... That's something in my mind that, like, people don't think about a lot. They see something and just think, wow, that looks cool. Not like, wow, I'm going to be wearing that shoe day by day. Will it really mm-hmm. be comfortable? Mm-hmm. In reality, not a lot of shoes are comfortable. I love Nike. Not all Nikes are comfortable. You wear Air Force Ones for 12 hours a day, your feet are cooked. Those things are heavy, That's man. That's what I'm going to say. Those things are so they heavy. They just hurt your feet. Yeah. So to answer from the sneaker point of view, I would say stuff like that. But even with, like, clothing, I'll just put in a quick little opinion. I feel like it's more so people sleep on wearing stuff they actually like, Mm -hmm. kind of related to the sneaker thing. They just go for things that other people know or are popular rather than, like, oh, I grew up watching this cartoon, which is something that hits home for me, Mm. like Cartoon Network stuff. Not saying everyone is the same, but rather, rather than relating to things they know personally, they just go for... What is the popular look that everyone else is doing instead of what do I like? Exactly. That's my biggest thing with people is like, what do you like versus what is the normal for everyone else? So and to answer your question, I feel like that's what's slept on is like, what do people actually like themselves versus what is popular by the norm? I understand. I understand. So, yeah. mm, Kali, I think I got two answers for uh, the clothing. First off, I'm going to say the uh, Collect store merch. Hey, there you go. I like that. Um, we try yes, to sir. keep as much proprietary merch for you guys in here. I know me personally, I'm not a big vintage guy. So 
when I come in here. I like to look at I look at the vintage tees if nothing really speaks to me, and like I'm in the store and the store is really cool. I want to leave with something. I think um, our store proprietary merch is going to be our uh, best bet. We just dropped some brand new camos too, so y'all like get in the store and check those out. Um, as far as shoes, I'm kind of on SD's vibe, like especially right now summertime. I think just you know cozy is where you need to be. Um, like definitely, uh, just I'm my whole style is pertain on just being comfortable. So um, yeah, just get some cozy, man. Whatever you feel comfortable. Don't do anything that like. You just see on Instagram, you think it's going to be cool. Just stay true to yourself, and uh, you'll be cool. It's a good answer. Sure. I like that. If you want your feet a lot, man, wear something comfortable rather than something yeah, that looks man. cool. Mm-hmm. Something that's cool. my only point. Get them orthotics. Don't get yes, nothing that's going <laughs> to have them your feet hurt, man. I was going to say, those, new balance, those, uh, those granddad ones. <laughs> 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 um, I would say, so, like, these pieces, I wouldn't say, are too slept on in, like, the vintage community as a whole. But I think in Jacksonville, they're a little slept on. It's just, like, really good smoked-out Harleys. Okay. Um, like, true – like, I don't think there it gets any more, like, true Americana than that. Um, just, like, a really good – like, just the re- – it almost looks like ash gray. It's so smoked out. Mm-hmm. Um, they all have really good graphics. Um they're all copyrighted, so you know exactly what year they're from. Oh, nice. So I would say that's probably, like, and something I take pride in for sure is, like, I feel like we have the best selection of that type of inventory here. For sure. In the, in the area. Um, and then the second one is probably, so when I was out in London last year, um, I, we were, went to the Jags game. And um, this was a brand that I'd, like, seen on the internet for a while, but until I got to London – and really saw it like firsthand in person is Cortez. Um, so Cortez is kind of like the the London version of Supreme in a way. It's just really like super hyped, like guerrilla marketing. Like it might be over the head for some people, pause, but it's for me, it like it really brings back <laughs> that, that like over my head. nostalgic uh, feeling that like Supreme gave me when I was coming out of high school and stuff like that. Um, and to see people come in here and like look at it and definitely people have been buying it. So to be that like bridge between the U S and London and being a store in Jacksonville is something I think is really cool. For sure. Um, but as far as like sneakers, um, I don't know, man, sneakers are in like a, they're in a weird space. Cause I'm at a point now where like I grew up as a sneakerhead, but I'd rather just work something functional, like something I don't really care too much about getting beat up. Or, Comfortability. Yeah. Here we're on we our go, feet all man. day. We're running errands. We're doing a lot. This so. is true. Unk talk. We're getting, we're getting older boys. That's yeah, what I'm hearing yeah. is what I'm hearing. Those are things I, I kind of gravitate towards more now, but I think Jordan's been doing a pretty cool job with like their reimagines. Mm. Like, Really just bringing back those, like, classic silhouettes. Um, sure. They have the Bread 3s yep. coming out later this year. Bread 4s dropped earlier this year. So yeah. the Reimagined 1s, that kind of, like, started the whole, got the ball rolling pause with, with that whole line of collection. So, um, but yeah, that's me. No, nah, man, that's solid, dude. I would say when it, when it comes to shoes, like you guys are saying, comfort is a big thing. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I wear um, blazers all the time. Like, those are some of my favorite shoes that yeah. I wear. Like, I, they're 99% of the time, those are on my feet just because it's something I can throw on real quick. They're not too heavy. They're somewhat decently comfortable for me because I got these long, skinny feet. And to yeah. get fine shoes that can, like, like actually hold my feet and I'm not slipping out of is the big thing. For yeah. sure. One yeah. thing that is dropping this year, which I'm really excited about, which probably will be overlooked, is uh, the Air Jordan. 17 so when i when they dropped back when i was in high school they came with the original like uh, uh like briefcase and everything. oh yeah and they're doing that again this year so like Five. um anything over jordan like 14 I, f- I feel like gets overlooks but just to, to see them kind of bring that back i think it's gonna be really dope nice nice Definitely agree with that every jordan over 14 is overlooked and i don't know jordan never dies but it's like he said the unk talk we're on our feet all day, so just in my mind, like, comfortability is key. But there's also, like, so many shoes that, you know, don't look like a a Jordan model that are very comfortable and mm-hmm. still look cool. Like, a pair of New Balances, you know what I mean? Like so I said, that dad balance, shoe. Bro. Yeah, I said they're on the uprise now, That's, though. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, the no, the, the dad shoe lately. look has been popular, but in my mind, it's like, forget how it looks. Like, how does it feel on foot? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In my mind, like, which 
back to what you're asking, like slept on, most people just go on how it looks versus like, how does this feel? Yeah. And, you know, I feel like that's a lot of the thing in the sneaker community. They buy shoes, wear them once. And they're like, I don't like the way these fit or look. Get rid of them. I feel you. You know, which is cool. Like, do your thing. But in my mind, like, buy what you like as far as comfortability goes. I I totally agree. Well, guys, we're coming to the end here. I got one final question for you guys. And each of you guys, if you guys need a second to think about it, that's fine. Anytime someone's new on the podcast, I always end with this question. And it is, do you feel successful? And if you do or do not, in what ways? Man, I feel Ooh, that's so. That's a good question. I'll go first. I feel so successful, man. Like, just being an entrepreneur and a business owner, man, it can be so tough. But every time that I like look back and thinking of like what else I could be doing, I'm like so blessed of like coming in here, having a store with like two of my best friends. It, I just right now it doesn't get any better than that. Like, and like the way the world's moving right now, like work. Like, I have my cousin, my brother, everyone I know, they're working, and it just seems, like, stressful, and it's, I don't know, it just seems like it's not fun at the moment, but just being able to come in here with these guys, no matter how hard it gets, it's, like, we told, like, our intern the other day, it it looks like we do a lot of fun stuff, but for every one fun thing we do, there's 20 unfun things that we got to do, for sure, and it's not easy, but... I just, um, I'm blessed to be able to come in here every day, bro, for sure. Y'all do not see the behind the scenes, man. Y'all think it looks sweet and it's fun, but it ain't. It's a lot of work. Yeah, man. And we put in that work to where it looks the way it does. We got to fight and, you know, work hard and think about how to get people in here every week. And, yeah, that's the hard part. And, you know, when stuff is slow, what do we do to pivot and other things like that? So, just like any other job, we have to we have very hard decisions to make, and um, sometimes we got to hit deadlines and stuff. But we really t- keep each other accountable, and um, I'm just blessed to be able to be here with these guys for sure. No matter like we're going to collect to the world for sure, but like we'll be here for a minute. Oh yeah, for sure. for sure. The grind doesn't stop, and consistency is key. But uh, I guess I'll go next. I want to say that I'm on the fence between feeling successful and. I guess always wanting more because Mm -hmm. for me, like I do feel successful, you know, I'm someone that grew up with a very shaky background as a kid. Like I came up kind of rough and getting in a lot of trouble and just not being the best, you know, not making the best decisions, kind of like juvenile delinquent vibes. That was my biggest thing as a kid. And now that I'm an adult, I look back on those times where I was making terrible decisions and compare it to now where I'm like, damn, I'm really making a, a name for myself. I'm, like, doing something positive. I'm putting in work. I'm, like, building a brand, building a name for myself, all these different things. It definitely plays out, but I'm on the fence because I, I do feel successful in ways, mm-hmm. but I always want more. Back to the reset days where these yeah. guys want to take a day off, I don't. Like, I genuinely – Even on a day I'm dead tired, I don't feel like doing anything. My mind's still, like, trained to just be, like, what can I do more? What's the next thing I can do? Like, how can I keep working Mm -hmm. to be successful? Because in my mind, like, yes, I've had success, and I do love where I've been and where my life is going. But it's also, like, I don't get any of this from just sitting back and not doing anything. Like, it takes the work that I put in. So each day I wake up, I want to continue that like how much more work can i put in to get to a point where i can take a week off i can go on a cruise you know i can go to europe go just take a you know like actually enjoy life for what it is rather than like oh we're closed on monday let me do some laundry at home like no i understand man that's real like hey sometimes that laundry will build up man it takes me a whole day to do laundry (laughs) that's why i said that though because my days off are usually personal chores yeah but just to answer your question i do feel successful but i always want more so like for sure i'm trying to strive for more than what i'm used to i I definitely want to have those days where like i can book a week-long vacation and i don't have to think about work that's the goal but like for now it's just work you know like we'll build up to that keep grinding man i say i believe in y'all grind don't stop um i kind of would piggyback off what he was saying is like I'm like really hard on myself, so like I, I don't ever fit, f- like truly feel satisfied. But one thing I will say I'm proud about is through our hard work over the past couple of years is we've definitely 
earn back our time. You know, if we don't feel like coming in on a Monday because we're closed and we want to go to St. Augustine or anything like that, I can make that decision. Like I've, I've put myself in a position in life where, you know, I'm not emailing my manager for if I want to do PTO this week or just mm-hmm. PTO in general, like, you know, only be, having a certain amount of hours out of the whole year where you don't have to be scheduled. Um, so I, I will say like, you know, we've succeeded in that way for sure, but, um, I'm still hungry for trying to take this as far as we can go. For sure. Yeah. Keep always, grinding. Always, always want still more. hungry, man. I was going to say. Boys are still hungry. Like I, that's in my mind, that's the answer to that is just always want more. Like we do feel success in what we've done, especially these two. Like they've had this brand longer than I've been around, but just in the short time I've been here, it's like, I want more. Like oh, even yeah. with them introducing me and putting me on game and adding me to the team, I almost feel like I want more than what they're satisfied with sometimes. Like they oh, for sure. They for feel sure. satisfied. I'm like, nah, bro, we gotta I'm coming in tomorrow. We're closed. I'm yeah. coming yeah, in. Yeah, like, nah. Like yeah, for sure. And I don't want my answer to come off as saying like I'm satisfied, of course. Like we all collectively want more, but having S D here is like, you know, it just gives you extra momentum. It's like, hey, I'm here, we're closed, but there's still work to be done. So it's like, hey man, no even on your work day when you're tired, you want to rest day, there's something that you can still be doing to, you know, further yourself and your business. Nah man. I I believe in all you guys, man. It's it's awesome to see the grind and like I can feel the energy of like you guys are working and keep pushing. I'm sure yeah, I'm gonna man. keep seeing new stuff come out and keep seeing you grind. I can't wait to see this whole block be collect. Yeah. yeah, 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 keep, yeah. One day keep growing I your thing. Flip that question on you though. Do you feel successful in your podcast and what's next for for your platform? So for me, man, I do feel very successful. And even though I might not have 10 million followers online or 10 million subscribers or anything, Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, what helps me feel successful is people reaching out. You know, I'm very lucky where I get reached out to multiple times a day with really cool people getting to sit down with people like you guys giving me your time. And making sure I'm putting a good product out there. Mm -hmm. I'm always still learning. There's going to be fuck ups. There's still going to be pieces that I'm missing and maybe haven't learned quite yet. But I know as you guys are saying, I'm always hungry. I'm going to continue to grind and continue to learn, get better and keep on going. There is no such thing as perfection, but as long as you keep trying to, at least as long as you keep trying to progress and do better each time, that's all you can really do. And also I'm very lucky, man. I got, I got a a wife behind me, man. I got married about seven months ago. Me and her have been together. Appreciate you guys. We've been together for seven years now and i asked her to move in one month into us dating and (laughs) ended up getting married man it's it's a crazy situation and she's she's not here today but she's usually the one doing a lot of the behind the scenes man taking photos helping me get stuff set up getting into other uh interviews and everything man man. so very lucky shout out to wifey yeah man man. shout out to shannon i love you shannon yep shannon yeah but say she helped me she she helped me build up the whole set she's helped me get equipment and all that and she supports my dream and i also have a family that helps support my dream so that's what it's about man yeah it helps the drive i'm sure yes sir so i was gonna say with bouncing off what you just said always learning is a good point too because you know like i myself can admit i don't have everything figured out oh, as same, well bro. as these no. guys like yeah. we as a team we don't have everything figured out we learn day by day like we're always questioning what can we do better than the day before like mm-hmm. how can we outperform ourselves so always learning <laughs> always hungry is a big thing like yeah. i I support that part of it, like always learning because not everyone's willing to learn. Some people are stubborn. Like they oh, might, 100%. they think they know everything. They don't mm-hmm. want to listen to shit. You got to tell them. Yeah, oh, it no. It takes a good, genuine person to step back from their ego and be like, no, you're right. What What is your thought process on this? Yeah. You know, like how do you do this versus how do I do it? Mm-hmm. Not everyone's willing to learn that because some people think they knew everything. So like always learning is a big part too that's where that's where i feel like me not having the background in audio and video and all this stuff has helped me not i didn't come in here knowing everything already yeah. so every part's a learning step and trust me guys i watch y'all you know i mean i everybody in jacks man who i see who has like who are coming up and getting bigger and bigger i pay attention i might not say something every single time i always make sure i leave a like or try to support in some way shape or form right. and that's the best thing i can do but just keep on grinding you guys are awesome and like i said thank you guys again so much for your time today thanks for having us of, of course sure, and as i tell everybody um this is an open door if you guys ever have something new going on or you guys were wanting to like promote something or anything in general let me know or if you guys are throwing events i know you guys have an event coming up in yeah, june i was gonna say uh june 9th uh we're 
Opening the store up to the community. We're having a Sunday market. Collect We're Sundays, taking man. everything in the store off the racks. The store is your guys', is, you know, theirs for the day. So can, June 9th, come to see us, 1 to 6. Hey, can, Klee got the drinks. Hey, <laughs> yeah, man, long drinks on me, man. Y'all pull up. <laughs> Consider it a community give back. We're literally clearing out the store. We're taking everything of our own off of the racks. So you guys who are vendors can set up yourselves, your own little position in the shop. All your own merchandise, we're taking everything out that is collect. Mm -hmm. It's all for the community. It's your storefront, man. We're trying to give back to the people. We want y'all to come hang out with us. Take advantage of the store. You can shop with us or you can just sell your own product here. We're really just trying to tap in with the locals because for us, we want to give back more than just what we have going on ourselves it's not just about us like we as a store we're nothing without the fan base and the customers and the clientele so this is our chance to give y'all an opportunity to come thrive in our environment whether you want to or not if you don't want to come sell come hang out we're man, gonna pull up we're gonna pull have free up. drinks pull up. Nephew, man. Man. Hey. Hey. Knife, we're man. gonna have man feed the veal here we're gonna have feed food, the veal shout vibes. out now the store is yours man just come hang out it's gonna be the Second Sunday. Sunday of every month. So hell yeah, yes. every month. This is going to be the first one, but we're trying to get this to be a routine thing. We want new vendors, new food, new DJ, all that. We just want to switch it up. Hell we're yeah, homies. we just want to rotate everything. I won't be able to make it to the June 9th one, but I'll make it to the next one. I'm in Ohio uh, during hey, that man, time. Uh, so every every month we're uh, here. So I'll come say what's it. up. But, guys, let everybody know where they can follow you, uh, guys, on whether it's your social media or if you want to do the so store social media. Let everybody know where they can follow you. Collect Jax, K-O-L-L-E-C-T, Jax. And the website's the same, www.collectjax.com. We're located on Beach and Hodges, 13799 Beach Boulevard. Come and check us out, man. Hell, yeah. First and foremost, for sure, Collect Jax. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Well, shout out to you guys. Thank you guys again for your time. Uh, you guys will be coming out in a couple weeks. Obviously, I'll put everything tagged in the description so they'll be sure. able to come find you guys immediately. Um, but like I said, guys, thank you so much. And as I say every single week, y'all, you can follow. Oh, I lost my headphones. You can follow us at Who Are You Pod for everything from Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, and also Who Are You on all of our YouTube channels, all the normal spots. But as we say again, every single week, we will see y'all next week.